Hello, welcome back to Fear and Hunger. Whatever we left off, I have no idea when, but we're just getting right back into it. So it has to be something with this place. You take a closer look. You open the passages of Mahabur. The pages start telling you stories of past ages. Oh, shit. Feels like you fell asleep, almost. As you open your eyes, a new world is upon you. I mean, as long as they don't bleed to death in this dream world. Or that the ghost can chase us here. We can still find items in here, though. The city is starting to feel more and more like an illusion. You search the iron, iron arrow. I need bandages and health, but... A stench of death and gore fills the damp air. More badass shit. I mean, what else can I say? We could probably jump down this pit, too. Probably. No. It's just, uh, this is Sparta Pit, and that's it. Alright, where is this going? I'm... I'm worried about both recording time, how much time I've left to work, but also how I'm going to edit this shit. This is, uh... All new to me, so I mean... Three doors. Middle door. The room is filled with meat-eating flies. I don't think I want to deal with meat-eating flies, but... This is all unfamiliar territory, and I'm both concerned and nervous because I'd rather find something awesome, you know, conclusive, but when you usually play RPG games, usually you don't go in a dungeon you don't know you aren't prepared for, or you, that you know you can escape from if you feel like you're getting way over your head, and this game I don't feel like if I delve into this tree dungeon that I could get out of it. It's like a, if we go down here, it genuinely feels like there is no way out. You are fucked. So prepare to die, essentially. So it's, I'm just sort of immersing my brain into this vibe. Weird. Oh, hunger. Yeah, let's feed the ghoul. Here you go, have some, have some jerky. Ah, ancient scroll, I can read it. Scroll of Longsword, what? Learn the secrets of the Leg Sweep, a devastating sword technique that requires great finesse. What? Leg Sweep? A high finesse arcing attack that can only be performed with a light bladed weapon. Ooh. So it was like the um the ghost's ability. I'm learning is this like Look at the thing on the ground, it looks like a loaf of bread. Ah, it's the ghost again, isn't it? Fuck you, why you can feel the ghost showing a little respect towards you. I don't care. I'm in a dream world, and he's still chasing me. I just want to figure out what this area has, or why am I even here? Bear trap, that's nice. I'm genuinely curious, but I don't want to die and just, like, lose everything, because I don't want to come back here. Like, the only way I'd come back to this area of the game is if I go through the, the caves, the mining area. The mining area I haven't even done yet, and... Essentially, if the end of the demo is through the mine area, I'd want to go do all of that first. Oh shit. No. Lever is jammed. I need to sacrifice two people. No. What were the ghouls? Why is it asking if I want to put that dude there? I don't want to like, just fuck everything over and put one of my combat buddies on there. Looks like I, I would need to. Ah, see, there's just these things. Like, 
what if I do that? What if I don't do that? There's so many sacrificial areas with advantages and disadvantages I'm unfamiliar with. Well, I mean, disadvantages losing a, a competent living party member that you can fully equip, which is extremely valuable. Looks like I have no more choice in the matter. Unless these stairs... nope. Oh, cloth fragment, finally. There we go. Patched up my character for once. Ah, a treasure chest. Damn it. What I get in turn for losing tobacco. A rare luxury product from the new continent, the dark lands of inland, can be smoked with a pipe. Alright. Well, I have no idea what else I can do here except to actually sacrifice the dudes, but being that we feel like we've dreamt, then we could maybe think that our party that we have right now is not real. So if we, if I sacrifice this guy, it won't be the same like in the real world where we're still in the tree dungeon. So sacrificing shouldn't shouldn't cause problems. Sorry, buddy. Uh, why is he here? It's primary pain, secondary pain. Oh. oh, this is nasty. Why am I doing this? Why are you coming here? No, why? What are you even? The fuck? He's just showing up when I'm torturing my buddy. Is he from the dude that was just... He's not just... What? Who is this thing? Without saying anything, the tormented one walks towards you. You try talking. Please don't. No! Oh! Uh, I don't, you know, want to... Oh, jeez. Ah, uh, shit. Okay. Oh, okay, fine, we're going... Tormented one, I don't care, I want to survive with one health and three health. Oh, God. Ah. Uh... Oh, God. Well, I think maybe defeating that thing is the end of the demo, because I do remember seeing a screenshot that says this is the end of the demo. Maybe this, that is the end of the demo area. Well, either way, I, I, this has been an hour recording. Maybe this is like three to four episodes in itself of me just adventuring in fear and hunger. However, I am not even close to being done. If people want me to play this game, I'm going to... My uh, my right eye feels just blurry as fuck. I need... Ugh. Of all of the indie horror games, that whenever I check to see recent releases to see if there's anything worth playing, over the past three days there hasn't been anything, so there hasn't been any new games I feel urgent to have to play. So it felt like the per pristine opportunity to play Fear and Hunger. And also with a new microphone setup where it's like, um, you can basically tell it's like right here, this is the microphone, and it goes all the way up above above my head, where usually it's the other way around. So I'm hoping that helps with the audio, makes it so you can hear me better. And even with the fan blowing on it, it's blowing on the back of it instead of the side of it. So hopefully the fan that keeps me cool during these stupid heat waves that are still happening will not interfere with the microphone quality. With that said and done, um, 
we've explored the tree, we went into really deep depths, into a dream world. The game has reminded me a lot about my first experiences with Dark Souls 1. With Dark Souls 1, there is a really memorable experience I had that's really hard to forget, and I'll just summarize it, I guess, a little bit, but what was really memorable about Dark Souls was the freedom that it was implied to be given to you, like, what it, it is somewhat linear and it somewhat isn't. But in Dark Souls, I remember when I was, like, first opened up the sewer area, and I delve into um, the plague, the plague town, plague area, and I kept traveling down and down and down and down into like the toxic ocean area, and then I found a secret passageway behind a tree to get down into the log area, fighting the mushroom things, the paralysis frog creature things with the big eyes. Constantly just exploring and exploring and adventuring non-stop without pause, without saving. And having explored down constant towns and different enemies and surviving all the fights. And going down the tree log into the giant ocean area where that hydra is in the off distance. And the, what I believe to be the earth dragon that makes so you can join the dragon cult or syndicate. It's been a long time. If I'm mixing and ma mix matching words, forgive me. But finding the Earth Dragon, all that adventuring from up on the surface level of the town to the sewers to all the steps and places you visit to get down to the dragon on the bottom with the ocean and the trees, it was a remarkable adventure because it's just nothing held my hand. The danger was real. I was in over my head. And it was just a dangerous journey there and back again. And it was something very memorable because nothing guided me. I was free to mindlessly wander and ended up in a location that just looked really cool. And it was just a remarkable adventure that it's like I don't frequently ever have. Like maybe you could find that in The Witcher 3? Maybe? But otherwise, this is sort of what this game just, just sort of gave me that exact same feeling as the Dark Souls 1 adventure of just randomly roaming. The only difference in this one, in Dark Souls, I had the vibe of, I gotta survive this, I have to survive this, holy shit, holy shit, and this is just, I'm not gonna survive. I, I, I don't feel like I will survive any of this. It's just gonna be, I'm gonna die, it's just a matter of when and how and in what horrific manner. Um, instead, I was chased by apparently the uh, the ruthless immortal one of sorts. I can't even remember its name, but it was apparently maybe an end game boss at the moment for this demo version 5.1. So the next time I play this game, I'm gonna have to go to the mines instead. So what I'll do is I'll start the save again, all the way back from the beginning of where I saved at the bed, and I'll reget everything. Hope I get that crude sword too. The crude sword was awesome. Don't have skeleton uh, bony die. Get the second bony guy wherever I can find another skeleton, and go through the mines. I have not traversed. I have not traversed through the mines. I want to know what the mines are about. So, anyways, ending it here. I'm gonna continue some more. So people are just f filled with more and more and more fear and hunger until everyone's tired of fear and hunger and until the game releases, which I heard the game was gonna release maybe around mid October. A lot of games releasing mid October, so I'm going to be really really busy. So, I hope you enjoyed this game, and continue looking forward to more episodes. If you enjoyed this, please leave a like, comment, hit that subscribe button, become a subscriber, hit the bell notification down below for updates on my videos. Thank you for watching, and until the next time.